priority? Is it tackling climate change or is it Brexit? Uh, the priority is undoubtedly tackling the climate emergency, but we think remaining in the European Union is a very important way to work with our neighbours around the Paris Agreement. Of course, the uh, me big meeting is happening in Madrid right now to do that mm. and also to make sure we protect uh, the environmental standards that we've got through the European Union. In, in your party is an organisation or a, a faction called Green Left. Are you part of Green Left? I'm a member of Green Left. Right, yeah. so you're a member of Green Left whose chairman says... Um, members are quitting the Greens because of the Unite to Remain election pact with the Lib Dems, because it's, it's basically putting Brexit before uh, the climate emergency. He says, the Lib Dems don't share our politics, shown by their track records in the coalition government and all the Tory policies they voted for. We saw the Andrew Neil interview with Jo Swinson last night. She was tackled over her support for bread bedroom tax, benefit cuts and the introduction of universal credit. By entering into this pact, he says, you, member of this particular faction of the Green Party, are now prioritising Brexit over the climate emergency and it's costing you members. Well, this is something that our membership decided. It wasn't something that the leadership decided. Uh, every single local party where they've stood aside or where Lib Dems have stood aside for us have had a discussion about it, had a debate and a ballot conference passed a motion uh, saying we should go forward with this and it's been a decision that's made democratically. Has it lost your members? Um, in net, no. <laughs> we've, we've increased our membership so uh, we, quite significantly. I think so there when will he be says some members people... are quitting the Greens in protest, is he making that up? Um, no, some people have left but more people have joined, I think attracted by the idea of parties working together and collaborating but they may for be, what they think is good. They may be prioritising Brexit. I suppose his concern is that people who think that climate change should be absolutely front and centre for you, you're losing those members and you will be losing those voters. Actually, the best way, uh, why people vote for the Green Party is they want to see more Green MPs in Parliament. And under a broken system, this is the best way, most effective way of maximising our chances of getting more Green MPs in Parliament precisely to do that to but tackle there the climate. Are, so, but there are still some of this alliance candidates standing against Remain backing MPs as well. So this, this, this alliance, this tactic, isn't... Perfect, is it? But it's not perfect. Politics is not perfect. It's the art of the possible. But if you're talking about Labour, of course, Labour yes. are not a Remain party. And their you know, mani manifesto in 2017 was uh, to carry on with Brexit. Well, people on, voted for on, Labour in on, 2017. Then to vote... Well, Labour finish, are, it's important are, are, point are, are pushing find... for a second referendum. They are, absolutely. And we know a huge number of their shadow cabinet are Remainers yeah. and a significant number of their of the people standing Which to be MPs will great. be Remainers. And, and I think we've done a hell of a lot in the Green Party to shift them to that position. It's been painful <laughs> shifting the whole Labour Party to a people's vote position. But it's because people have been voting for Remain parties like the Green Party that Labour have had to change their position uh, to a more positive one. What do you want to people that turn out to say back in 2015 when the Conservatives were calling for a referendum on staying in or leaving the EU? The Greens were right there, front and centre, saying this absolutely is a distraction from everything else that we need to get on with, which is green issues. Mm. We need to get this referendum done. And then once we had that referendum and we got a result and the majority was that we should leave, you're now pushing for another one because actually it wasn't the answer that you really wanted. Well, that's not obviously the reason why we're asking for a people's vote. I think we're asking for a people's vote because... Uh, people have changed their minds because people have seen new information. They didn't feel that the initial referendum you was a good debate. Though, because we had the yes, vote and, and there was a decisive outcome. As close as it was, it and was decisive. And you backed yeah. that vote, as Ben says. Yeah. Why, why back a vote if you're then going to take issue with the result of the vote? Was it a mistake no. to back the referendum? Because we are fundamentally believers that more democracy is a good Thing. And then you want and to, to overturn the democratic vote. No, we don't. We want to make sure that that deal is put back to the people. How can more democracy be undemocratic? Well, because people who believe in democracy might believe in standing by a democratic vote. Yes, I mean, the democratic vote took place. It was to go and uh, negotiate the deal. But there was uh, now no a lot of people... that people were going to get to vote on what that deal was, though. Uh, I think, actually, you'll find a lot of levers uh, didn't rule it out at all. And at one point, Nigel Farage was even saying, maybe we should, maybe people's vote is a way Sorry, forward. on the ballot paper, it was... The question was, do you want to leave the EU or do you want to remain? Mm -hmm. It wasn't, do you want to leave the EU and then the government will go and ne negotiate the deal and then you can have a second vote on whether you like that deal or not. I don't know how many of the 17.4 million would like the deal or not like the deal, but they definitely voted to leave. Sure, look, people in my family 
voted to leave. Uh, people in my band voted to leave. I have good mates, I have good relatives that voted to leave. But they recognised that actually when that debate took place, uh, they weren't given all the information. No-one was talking about the Irish border. Now, just think about it. If you say, you know, you ask the question, do you want a car? Yes, I want a car. Mm -hmm. And then the car turns up and you go, actually, that's not what I want. You're, you're absolutely Sorry, totally Jonathan entitled Barton, to you change your backed mind. The referendum. You're totally. It just sounds so disingenuous to say we want a referendum, but if you don't vote the way we want you to, we'll just hold another referendum well, until you do. As I've said, that's not the argument we're putting forward. It's exactly the argument no. you're putting forward. No, the argument we're putting forward is that people now know more than they did then. Well, people people have changed their or, minds. Or why, how do you me, know people, why enough people, people have changed their minds that you would now win well, that referendum? The polling. It's not about whether we win it or not, it's the fact that people have changed their minds and we see it from the polling that people have you know, taken If you could go position. back to 2015, because we're talking about hindsight, we're talking about seeing things beyond... If you go back to 2015, would you still back having that referendum in the first place? Um, I would uh, back a better referendum process. I don't think that the referendum was done particularly well, and I think people on both sides agree that it was a pretty poor level of debate. And I want to criticise both the Leave campaign and the Remain campaign for using fear. That's not what we do in the Green Party. We believe we want a constructive, meaningful democratic process. And I don't think that referendum was a good example of democracy in okay. action. OK, you say you don't use fear. You're part of Extinction Rebellion. Is that the case? Uh, I'm not. I, I've spoken at... Uh, Extinction Rebellion rallies, uh, and you I, were part I'm of the Extinction Re and Rebellion I, protests. Uh, I got, I did get arrested, and I've got to be very, very careful Rebellion because protest. I have to be very careful because there's a pending investigation uh, about my arrest. Mm -hmm. But the reason, uh, the specific specific circumstances, without getting myself into too much trouble, mm -hmm. uh, were that there was a uh, an order passed under the Public Order Act by the police about civil. Uh, unrest and protest and the right to protest. Do you think At that, that point, I thought it was right to stand up for the right to protest. Do you think that Extinction Rebellion is helping or hindering your case? Because what we saw in that, that period of, of protest was at times, and you say not fear, but it was at times very violent and very dramatic. You only had to see the pictures of what happened at Canning Town. Yeah. When, and uh, I'm, I, I'm not a member of Extinction Rebellion, and I criticise no, that. But you have action. spoken at Extinction Rebellion protests. Yeah. I will go, whenever I'm invited, I go and speak. I spoke at the Labour Party conference. I don't agree with Labour. <laughs> I will go and speak and put my case uh, wherever I'm invited. Because one, of their, one, of their, one of their thrusts is to get <laughs> as many people as arrested as possible. You have become one of those people <laughs> being part of that uh, protest. Uh, do you think that's the right way about going about these things, to sort of consume the police, consume security services, consume the justice system by overloading them with arrests just to get your point across? So, uh, I don't know if you've interviewed people from Extinction Rebellion, but I think what they'd say, if you did, uh, was that they have given up faith in politics. They believe that the political system has failed when it comes mm -hmm. to the climate emergency, and this is the last resort. They're seeing an existential crisis. They're seeing my children, your children threatened, and our future. This is, you know, the first duty of government is to protect, and it has not done so. And this is the last resort for them. And I can understand hey, that, because this is absolutely... Eco-anxiety apparently on the rise amongst um, teenagers. Do you think when you say my children and your children are threatened that that doesn't contribute towards eco-anxiety for our young people? Young people are actually, and we've seen it with the school strikes, are more clued up often than adults like you and me about... They're taught it in schools, they understand the science, they know what's going on, they are in better grasp of the facts, certainly the world leaders like Donald Trump. You know, they get what's going on and they are really, really worried. Do These are the you... facts, not because people have scared them, but because they've seen the science. Really, really worried? Yes. I mean, have you not been on the school strikes? Have you not had no young people who have been out there? Have you not talked to them? I've walked with them, I've marched with them. They know what their future holds. They know it's been snatched away from them. I mean, goodness me. They've shown I'm better sorry. leadership than our politicians okay. in waking us up but, to this. But, uh, I, I completely accept that there are, there are issues around climate change which need to be tackled. But when you say their future being snatched away from them... I mean, you know, if you're talking to, for yeah. instance, a 14-year-old right now, do you think it's saying to them your future is being snatched away from them? That's what they're saying them? to us. 
I, I walked alongside young people and they said, what's the point in me going to school if I have no future? What's the point in me studying hard if I have no future? They recognise that we aren't on track to meet even two degrees uh, that maximum, you know, let alone one and a half degrees. That means a 50-50% chance by the International Committee on Climate okay. Change's own uh, estimation that we will have runaway climate change. The they read those reports. Yeah, the, so I think getting back to Ben's original point, do you think Extinction Rebellion has been a benefit for you? I mean, you've been pretty critical of them and the threatening language. You've used quite worrying language yourself in this interview. Do you think that they've helped you? Have you uh, got more votes through I think Extinction Rebellion? What Extinction Rebellion and the school strikes and Greta Thunberg and David Attenborough have done, all in there, you know, mm. to different audiences, have pushed uh, climate up the agenda in a way that we haven't seen previously. And I think that is really okay. to be welcomed. Because so why not, I might not agree with all the tactics, yeah. but it, over in the round, I think okay. it's a good thing. The, it costs 37 million to police those Extinction Rebellion protests this year. That is more than double what is spent by the Met on the Violent Crime Task Force. Now, I am extremely concerned about knife crime in London and the idea that twice as much is spent on those protests than the Violent Crime Task Force, I think, is a real worry. And when you talk about threats and risks mm -hmm. to young people, particularly in this city, I think they'd be particularly concerned about that. Is that money worth spending? The, the issue, 37 million? Uh, the issue, uh, the, the lack of funding to tackle knife crime is not because of Extinction Rebellion. The lack of funding for knife crime is because of a lack of political will. It's a stark from contrast, the isn't it? Every Imagine Saturday, if that money was put into the Violent Crime Task Force. Every Saturday, we go and watch football matches, we close down roads, we organise ourselves, we have a massive policing operation. Mm. Uh, we, the, the issue around knife crime is the lack of investment, not the fact that the police are doing other things. What would be success for you at this election, Jonathan Bartley, in the Green Party? Well, I think to some extent we've had the success in that we've shifted all the parties to talking about the climate emergency. Now, just two years ago, we had to go around with a big green question mark, photobombing interviews like mm. this to get people to talk about the climate. Now so we've had a climate like that's debate. shifted dramatically already. It has. The other parties aren't doing nearly enough, and I'm worried that it's mm. just rhetoric and not actually mm. substance. But there is no doubt at all that this has ramped right up the agenda, and that is so important. And finally, do you watch the Queen's Christmas message? Uh, I do. Uh, I'll be completely honest. What time honest. of day do you watch it? <laughs> <laughs> Usually we rush through lunch to get there for three o'clock. Um, I'm a Republican. I put my hands up to it. Uh, but my mum loves the Queen's speech, uh, and so I watch it with her. My grandma always used to... I don't know if they still do the national anthem, but used to stand up for the national anthem and we'd stand up with her. Does, it, a Republican matter? Out of Does it matter that Jeremy Corbyn said he watched it in the morning when it's on at three o'clock in the afternoon? Um, I, I don't think... I think there are bigger issues, frankly. Of course. Well, <laughs> Does being that honest, matter? Being I, 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 think, I think putting your hands up and saying you got something wrong as a politician is important and I try and do it as much as possible. Anything you want to admit to? <laughs> I, lots, but I haven't got time. <laughs>